الفتح على الإمام or correcting the recitation of the Imam can cause problems, frustrations, and disturbance if not done properly. That's why it is one of the more important things to learn, especially in times like Ramadan, in Taraweeh prayer. First of all, you need to know that there are three types of mistakes. Mistakes that you must correct. So it is mandatory or wajib to correct these mistakes. Second, mistakes that should be corrected. So it is not mandatory to correct them, but it is better to do so. And last, mistakes that you must not correct if the Imam makes them. Let's start with the first type of mistakes. Mistakes that you must correct. If the Imam makes a mistake that changes the meaning in Surah Al-Fatiha, then you must remind the Imam and correct the mistake. So if the Imam, for example, said, with dhamma, instead of with Fatha, which then completely changes the meaning, as you can see, then you must remind the Imam and correct that mistake. Second, if the Imam forgets an entire ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha, like if the Imam says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Maliki Yawmiddin, this is a major mistake that must be corrected. So these mistakes in Surah Al-Fatiha specifically will invalidate the prayer entirely. And that's why it is mandatory to correct these mistakes before you proceed with prayer. Third, if the mistake made by the Imam caused the opposite meaning of the ayah to be conveyed, like then making the believers enter Jahannam and the disbelievers enter Paradise, or making kufr better than iman, and so on. These mistakes must also be corrected. So in this ayah, for example, if the imam says, instead of, or at the end of the ayah, he says, by mistake. It would then place the righteous into the fire and the criminals in paradise, which is the exact opposite meaning of the ayah. In such case, it is a must to correct this type of mistake. Sometimes providing the opposite meaning doesn't have to be a change of an entire word, but it could also be a change in harakah or tashkil, like in this ayah. If the imam mistakenly put dhamma on the honored word, it would provide the opposite meaning, which is impossible to say the least. So, missing an ayah, or mistakes that change the meaning in Surah Al-Fatiha, as well as mistakes that give the opposite meaning in other surahs, must all be corrected. Next, mistakes that are better corrected, but it is not mandatory to correct them. If the Imam makes a mistake that changes the meaning but not turning it into the opposite meaning, like in this ayah, If the Imam says, It is a mistake, it does change the meaning, but it is not the opposite. So it is better to correct it, but it is not mandatory. Even if the Imam mixed two surahs with one another, like, for example, reading this ayah from Surah Al-A'raf, and instead of saying, يَأْتُوكَ بِكُلِّ سَاحِرٍ عَلِيمٍ He read, يَأْتُوكَ بِكُلِّ سَحَارٍ عَلِيمٍ Which is from Surah Al-Shu'ara. So it is a mistake, but it is not mandatory to correct it, since the meaning is not turned into the opposite. Moving to the third type of mistakes, which are mistakes that must not be corrected. This includes minor mistakes that don't affect the meaning at all, but make the recitation less perfect. Like mistakes in qalqala, the length of secondary med, idgham, iqlab, nasalization, this type of mistakes. 
because in this case, ensuring a smooth execution of prayer is of higher priority, so minor mistakes should be tolerated, as long as the meaning is not changed or it turned it into the opposite meaning. So these are the three types of mistakes and what we should do in each one of them. But now is the question, can anyone correct the mistake and how should we do that? And this is where many things can go wrong. So to ensure proper execution, you can follow these seven principles on how you should correct the recitation of the Imam properly. And afterwards, we'll study a practical case that was actually caught on camera to see what we can learn from it. The first principle is, make sure that your intention is pure and for the sake of Allah. You're not trying to show off that you know this ayah or you want to put the Imam in a bad situation or you know something like that. Make sure that it is only for the sake of Allah. And this is very, very important for your own prayer. Second, if you are not 100% sure that there is a mistake, or you're not 100% certain what the correction is, then it is better not to say anything. There are many ayat in the Qur'an that are very similar, so if you don't know for sure, you might be correcting something that is actually an ayat that you don't know of. So you have to be 100% certain. Number three, if you hear a mistake, don't immediately start correcting the imam, since Hafiz will probably realize the mistake he made and correct himself. Sometimes the imam needs a moment to remember or gather the line of thought to continue. Or it could also be that the imam is affected by the ayah and needs a moment. Others also try to repeat the ayah to try to remember. So if you immediately correct the imam, it would put a lot of pressure on him going forward and it can potentially cause more mistakes. Number four, if you know there is a corrector behind the Imam, then wait for them to correct first. We don't want more than one person correcting the Imam at the same time, which might cause confusion during prayer. Five, if you are far enough from the Imam that he won't hear you, then not saying anything is better as it won't benefit the Imam and it ensures that other people are not distracted during prayer. Number six, when correcting, it is better to wait until the imam pauses to take a breath. Then correct the part that needs correction, rather than raise your voice or interrupt the recitation, as this might confuse the imam and make him unable to remember where he had stopped or not even properly hear the correction over his own voice. Seven, if the mistake was the last word before ruku'a and the imam had already gone to ruku'a, it would be difficult for the imam to go back up and correct the mistake and then go back down for ruku'a. But if he hasn't already gone down for ruku'a, then you can still correct. So make sure to make the right call according to the situation. Finally, let us observe what happens in this situation to learn from it. This is Shaykh al hudayfi and this is the corrector of the Imam, or Al-Fatih. And in prayer, the Imam makes a mistake and forgets an ayah. Notice then what happens. This is indeed a practical lesson to all of us on how to correct the Imam properly. Notice the Imam repeated an ayah to help himself remember. But at the same time, notice how Shaykh al hudayfi didn't just immediately correct the Imam. He first checked if the corrector of the Imam, or Al-Fatih, is present behind the Imam, then it would be more suitable for the one closer to the Imam to remind the Imam and correct the mistake. Also, when the correction happens, it happens with a low voice that only the Imam can hear, and he waited until the Imam paused to take a breath so that he can correct the mistake properly. 
And so the correction went smoothly and the prayer continued without any problems. That's why this is an excellent example on how to do that properly. So applying these rules requires both knowledge and wisdom to not cause disturbance and help the Imam further. Thanks for watching. If you want to start reading and understanding the Quran in Arabic, then you should start your journey right here. And don't forget to check out my latest book, which goes perfectly with this free course. I'll leave the links for all of them in the description, so check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.